What? What do you want? My buddy comes to visit me. Bella? She's a talker. What? Well, come here. What are you doing, huh? Yeah, she's my little buddy. She is the reason why my hands look like this. All cut up. Hey, girl. What? What are you doing? She comes in here wanting attention. Right? Bella. Where are you going? Say hi. Hey. Hey. What you doing? Hmm? Going bye bye? Alright, I'll see you later. Goofy cat. Time to get started on this. All right, so we have a 100 water soldering gun, or we have a 30 watt soldering pencil. This is finer tipped. This is better for heavier stuff. And I've got some rosin core solder. I always use the rosin core solder instead of uh, brushing on rosin. Seems to be a little bit easier to uh, work with. And this is basically what I want to be doing today. So I got the tone control, volume control, five-way switch. I have a kit that came with uh, some CTS pots. And as you can see, there's some capacitors inside there that I'm thinking about swapping out the green cap for one of these caps and use this wire instead of what this is, what's on here. Just resolder everything, redo it all, and uh, install it into the guitar. Wait for my pickup rings to come in. I still haven't gotten those yet. Seems like they're either still on the boat or on their way over here, I hope. All right, so this is what I got to play with and this is what I'm gonna end up working on today.
All right, so I have the five-way switch, tone and volume control basically soldered up the way that they're supposed to be as far as the schematics that I got from Ibanez. And basically, this is going to be going, you know, back together the same way it came apart. I just wanted to clean up the mess that they had as far as wires go over here and kind of seal up and insulate things a little bit better. These are the two wires that will go to the output jack. This is a ground wire, which I'll end up trimming down later. And then the rest of the pickups get basically tacked on over here. Not a big deal. And you can kind of see their solder is like a little sloppy and shit. And uh, yeah, so everything is basically done now the wiring kit that i ended up using was a wiring kit from um, somebody that i got some cts pots from it was for a less less paul kit and it came with two of these tone uh, capacitors and i'm using one of them instead of the green one on here i would just want to see how it sounds if i don't like it i can always go back to the green one i think i have some orange one someplace else now the wire that came with that cts pot kit uh, i love this stuff and i want to get more of it you have your outside shielded mesh uh, ground cloth insulator, and then you have your shielded insul you know, your plastic underneath that, the white there, and then you have your positive. So you have your positive, and then you have your negative on the outside, which is nice because you can solder right to it and makes it look nice and clean. It's very flexible, so it's not really tight, and hopefully I've got enough on here to where um, I can mount everything without having any troubles. So here is a schematic of the Ibanez wire diagram that I end up using for uh, putting this thing back together. There's several of them out there. I had to look for the configure of the three wire pickup um, for the, what are these things called? The Infinity 1, the Infinity 2s. And uh, basically, it's going to be wired back the same way it came apart, just cleaning up the wires and making them look a little bit more nicer. So let's get on to that.
All right, so this is the fun part of this video. I have a little bit of a unboxing to do, and this is George's fault that I ended up picking this up. I started looking at some of the hollow body uh, or semi hollow body guitars and uh, found something that I couldn't pass up on. Plus, it is uh, a little bit of a thinner body, and uh, uh, from what I've been reading, a lot of players that don't like large uh, body guitars uh, are quite comfortable with this. I'm one of them. I don't really care for the big bottom guitars. Uh, I do like the Les Paul style and size and shape, but not really kind of like the uh, art core that I had before a while back. Um, it seemed to be like a, a very large guitar and I wasn't quite comfortable with it. So I did find something that was similar to it, but uh, a little bit different. So let's get, uh, let's get stabbing. Okay, so this is a pretty large, large box or guitar case. So let's get into this guitar case. All right, so I kind of cheated a little bit and opened up the case before videoing it, and there was a bunch of bubble wrap on the inside of it. So the guy packed it very, very well. I'm very shocked. Now let's get into this thing and see what's in it. Now the case on this thing, even though it has a canvas outside layer and it is padded it is a hard molded case so let's open this puppy up now this is not really the case for this guitar it is not uh, this guitar is not really fitted for this case it's a little bit on the sloppy side as far as room goes so this is probably a case for something like an acoustic or something but uh, what you're looking at here is a 2006 Ibanez and I'll get into some more detail about this when I get it on the bench because this does not stay open. Alright, so like I said before we are looking at a 2006 Ibanez AGS83B-ATF and this is a this is a beauty. Uh, I have to say that if you're thinking that this would be something that would have a um, kind of a glossy finish to it, this is not a gloss finished guitar. This has got a matte finish on it. But I gotta say that this thing is just, just unfriggin' real. It's beautiful. Now this does have uh, the flame maple top, sides, and back. This does have a uh, three-piece maple and mahogany set neck standard regular you know tuners I've seen on Ibanez stuff all the time which I'm going to change those out to locking tuners uh, headstock and everything on this thing is just just unreal like I said I got this as a pretty damn good deal and I, I, I couldn't resist it I, I couldn't pass it up Kind of on the hunt for some type of a semi hollow and uh, that wasn't as large as the arch core that I had a long time ago and I think I found it. Basic volume, volume, tone, tone, uh, three way box switch. This is not a regular three way switch that you would find in like a Les Paul. This is kind of a box switch. Now, this is supposed to have um, the Cosmo Black hardware, which I'm probably going to end up changing out the bridge, and like I said, with the tuners as well, uh, put a roller bridge on here and put locking tuners on here as well. I have a set of uh, three threes that I'm going to put on here. Um, what else? Uh, bound rosewood fretboard. It's got the Art One bridge, which you know, I've seen them before and it's basically just a tunematic bridge. You know, it's got the sharp corners on it to where you can kind of dig your hand in it. Large frets. And the one thing that kind of caught my eye with this thing was the inlays on the fretboard, which is the Artcore DX Pearl and Ablone uh, block 
fretboard inlays, which has the, I mean, they're just very, very nice. I mean, if I can get in there really good to show you. Now this guitar is in like perfect condition. There's really nothing that I really wouldn't do with it. It's got good action at the first fret. Um, action height overall is like the way I would set this. I mean, it's not bad. The nut on it as well is, is set the way I would set this thing up too. The only thing I really don't care for are these pick guards. But uh, this one kind of matches the body of it a little bit. And I think I will leave it on. I don't like taking them off because then you have the holes where the screws were. And on some Epiphones or Gibsons that have... Uh, Sometimes the nut that's inside of here will kind of rub up against the body and kind of cause a like a little bit of a rash in the finish. And I, this one looks like it's okay because it's on top of the pickup, not on the body. Um, what can I say? I found a deal that I couldn't pass up. I also found another deal that I couldn't pass up and I picked it up too as well. Uh, it's an, actually it's an Epiphone. Now this body style here is a lot thinner than some of the actual hollow bodies or semi-hollow bodies that I've seen, which makes it, you know, kind of not really a heavy guitar. It kind of lightens it up a little bit. Um, and like I said before, I don't like the big bottom girls as far as the guitars go. This one seems to be closer to a Les Paul uh, size. And uh, after reading a bunch of reviews on it and stuff like that, that this guitar is kind of, kind of the tits. I mean, it, it's, it's not a bad player. Uh, it's very comfortable to play. It's not awkward, uh, considering you know the body and shape and everything. And uh, even the the neck is a little on the chunky side. Not bad, not overly chunky, but now this is a set neck. And like I said before, this thing was very, very well taken care of. I mean, the guy that I got this from basically stated in uh, the email to me before he shipped it that uh, he was thinking about keeping it. He didn't want to, he didn't want to send it, but send it to me. He said that he plugged it in to kind of check things out a little bit, make sure everything is okay, and uh, thought about keeping it. And uh, I was like, no, because every all the other ones that I've seen that were uh, decent deals as far as prices go were damaged. And I mean damaged to where they were, the neck was dented, the body had some dents in it or some cracks in it or some chipping in it, headstock chipping on them. Um, one of them that I've seen that was a, a pretty good deal, all the hardware was corroded bad. Kind of like if it was uh, got wet. So this one here was kind of the better of them all that i was looking at and i was like no i'm don't don't you do that to me so looking at it over here there's no cracking in the finish or anything as far as the neck joint goes um again you can kind of feel the lip of the wood in the binding it's kind of a thing i noticed with a lot of the epiphones and some of the gibsons as well this over here is a little bit sharper of a lip over here but it doesn't look like there's any cracking and output jack is basically on the side instead of being on the top which I don't think that'll be too difficult to try to work on if I ever have to do strip out anything or take out anything on here um yeah that's about it I mean this is something that I was kind of looking into thank you George for kind of turning me back on to a hollow body and uh something that has a size that's not going to be um, just outrageously big for me. Even though I am a big guy, um, I don't like big guitars. So if that's it for this, I'm going to go ahead and put this back in its case. Uh, once I finish with the other Ibanez, I'm going to end up uh, doing some work on this thing. A little bit of cleanup here and there. There's, you know, there's shine up and polish up some of the chrome and again with the bridge and the tuners. Um, check the relief in the neck make sure truss rod works and everything else and uh yeah so again that's the ibanez that's the ags 83 b dash atf and flame maple 
This has kind of like a, a distressed look to it, not uh, a natural distress. This was actually the finish that's on the guitar. Kind of makes the edges look like they're dirty. Not so much of a burst, but just kind of like dirty edges. And it is a, there's a block inside of here. Now, this thing is supposed to have something, um, I can't remember what it was called, but the block that's in here is supposed to help with sustain as far as the guitar goes. And, uh, well, you know, who knows, maybe uh, when I get a little bit better of a player, I'll end, end up actually finding out if that is true or not. So anyways, guys, uh, take it easy, have a good one, and uh, I'll catch you all later. And remember, uh, if it ain't broken, don't tear it.